It is a fact that I have been silent on this channel for some time. As some of you noticed and kindly inquired about it, I thank you. There are two main reasons for this. The first is that times of silence are needed, so that the pulpit is emptied. What I mean by this is that when we are watching a communication channel, be it virtual on the internet like this one, or physical like a gathering or group, there is a metaphorical pulpit where the speaker is, and that is naturally the center of attention for the whole audience. If this is abused and the pulpit is never emptied for some time, then the people in the audience will never get a chance to contemplate themselves, and then, if so inclined, take the empty pulpit to share their own homework notes and contemplations. Moreover, the danger arises of unchecked indoctrination into the speaker's findings and observation, as is so often the case. The second is, as I've always stated here, that I will only ever say something when I have something to say, that will add to what has already been contemplated upon. I do not have a target number of periodic releases, nor do I want to be bound to any such obligation. For if I do, then the message will no longer be, hopefully, useful contemplation, but a rehash of what had already been said before. It will become superficial and repetitive, just for the sake of having to say something, of occupying the metaphorical pulpit mentioned before. I put together the Contemplations playlist on this YouTube channel to ensure that all the body of message work, so to speak, so that all the homework notes I gathered can be accessed and re-accessed as necessary by the listener. What is already there, in my view, is already significant enough to prompt revisits and fresh contemplations from time to time. From you. If nothing to add emerges to me, if nothing helpful to say is there, then it is best to be silent and empty the pulpit for others to have their turn, not only in contemplating themselves, while one is listening or speaking one is not contemplating, but also to allow those others to share what they found on the same pulpit. You see, we were educated into a social economy based on consuming, be it actual essential articles, be them fashions and ideas. Capitalism was used to destroy its own foundations. For if original capitalism showed the need to provide the best and most long-lasting product or service one can, as the measure of one's business success was one's actual usefulness to society, it was transformed into an ideology of wastefulness that dragged its concepts into the mud. What would be at first a product or service of the highest quality possible for the provider became a purposely ephemeral low-quality provision that would soon need to be replaced. Then, when this wastefulness had been bought into and the usefulness of capitalism was exhausted by adulteration and abuse, Ecology appeared and related limiting and policing ideologies to finally spring the we are all one trap. And who actually did it? The entities behind the imposed narratives or we that embodied them and gave them life? We who heard their tempting whispers and offered our energy as sacrifice to their goals. But I digress, this is not a political channel, nor will it ever be. We do not need new content to consume, when we already have much to observe again. In fact, I could say that this could be a third lateral reason for the periodic silence. It disinterests those who look for having new content to be entertained. So, I invite you to revisit all the previous contemplations, not just on this channel, by the way, and to share your notes. These thoughts are useful to understand why we were made to become eventually dependent or addicted to the entertainment of ideas, a superficial exercise rather than following them up to their deepest sense, because the same happened with religions, ideas and philosophy.
We were born in an imperfect culture that nevertheless allowed leeway for seeking and realizing. But that culture was already being degenerated. And we not only allowed it to happen, we contributed to it for sure. Like in the example I just gave, an idea must be useful and long-lasting and not just a mere snippet triggering a sense of comfort or discomfort if that's the entertainment one prefers. It is the long-lasting versus the immediate or the happiness versus the pleasure dichotomy. We bought into and contributed to the degeneration into the immediateness of things, disregarding their quality their consequences, and their insidious moral erosion of our characters and souls. The solution to the world puzzle is a moral one, not a physical, social, or institutionally religious one. As a friend of mine reminded me, we can only work out the evil within ourselves and at most our metaphorical backyard, never in others. This is exactly because we are not all one. And any attempt to weed out the evil in social terms will always require the grouping of individuals into certain more or less loose categories to try to force those individuals into a they-are-all-one status, identity politics. Be it to apply punishment if they are considered evil or to reward them with privilege if they are considered good. In any case, the consequence of doing so socially is that those who set out to clear evil become inevitably, themselves, instruments of the same evil they wanted to fight in the first place. I do not maintain this communication channel to cure the world. I do it to share my observations and realizations with individuals, and also to receive the sharing of their own observations and realizations so that we can cure ourselves. There is no healing for the world's sickness. It is what it is. I remember a quote from that Wings of Desire German movie that went, Time heals all, but what if time itself is the disease? Hmm. So it would help, perhaps, if we firstly stop consuming as a habit for the immediate engagement and not only in terms of economical markets, but also the markets of ideas, and resume our observations of the long-lasting first and then of the timeless, which, although it is unattainable from here, it inspires us to remember. And for that, we need to revisit and reobserve several times, in a peaceful corner of temporary calm seclusion, what we had already visited and observed. The seclusion and peace is essential for this, for how can we remain centered if through us we allow the flow of turbulent currents of a river of narratives and character roles to embody? As Matt from Quantum of Conscience used to say quite wisely, do not engage with the screen. The world is what it is and it needs us so much more than we need it. But the important factor is that we give each other the option of discovering or remembering that we are what we are beyond worldly narratives. That is the purpose of my sharing and of my openness to receive your sharing so that we can offer the chance of getting each of ourselves back.